Hello viewers, Super GT here. Now we arrive at one of the most dangerous circuits in the known universe, Willow Springs. It has finally come up once again in the daily races and we're going to give it a go and attempt to not die. It's one of the most unforgiving circuits, mainly because of the zero amount of tarmac runoff. You've just got sand. And if you get sent onto the sand, you're not coming back on for a long time. And even if you do, you've got dirty tyres for a week. So it's very, very unforgiving, this circuit. And throughout the course of this video, you can see very many mistakes. And not only by me, but by many others as well. Now, I will apologise very quickly for the sometimes... Well, sometimes the video is skipping a tiny bit, because for some reason, some of these clips... Um, the Elgato didn't want to record quite properly, so it might look a bit weird at times, but you'll hopefully get the picture. As we've already gone up two positions, and, and we're going to gain another one here, as this guy has a brief encounter with the sand, he manages to recover, to live to fight another day, but we're going to take his position off his hands, and move from 10th up into 7th on lap number 1. Only a five lap race, and there's a short lap here as well, of about 1 minute 12 ish. Now, let's fast forward into lap number two, just looking at the battle ahead quite keenly. And we have another visitor of the Sand Realm over here. So he's gone about 500 meters away from the circuit, and that would probably take him approximately three weeks to get back onto the track. So that's his race over. We move up into sixth place. Super GT in 6th place. Name a more iconic duo. I bet you can't. R4M the Jan, just up ahead. One of our minions from the R4M crew. Uh, someone serving a penalty up ahead. This is going to have some sort of adverse effect going to turn 1. The Italian goes for the move. He gets the move done. Okay, so we remain in 6th place. Was there contact there? It looked like there was a, a brief skirmish on the exit of turn 1. And the positions swap once again. Going to go for this gap? Not quite. Just close it off if you could quite catch that there. And then into the tricky uphill section. Now it's a good job that this track was so difficult on the Lewis Hamilton DLC. Because I must have spent a good three or four hours, maybe more, lapping this circuit over and over and over again. As R4M team, team orders there clear me to come through even though I'm not on my R4M account but it still still counts anyway yeah that Lewis Hamilton DLC was actually very very good practice for, the, for this you know uh, the fact that we drove so many laps because the diamond time on that DLC was so difficult to achieve but all is good um, you know lapping so many times always good practice so through the final turn which is probably for me the most difficult corner to get right so many interpretations of how to go around it I'm not sure where the Italian went there. It looked like he kind of went into the pit lane inadvertently. And that can happen. That can definitely happen. He's been claimed. Willow Springs has claimed another victim. As we head on to lap four in fifth. Only one more lap to go after this. But third place is within sight. Might be tricky to achieve. But you never know. In fact, there's a very high chance, very high probability of people crashing. And that's the one thing I've noticed about this track in this little session I did here. The fact that lots of people making mistakes. And this isn't like any other track really in the sense that you just dip two wheels, uh, two wheels wide and you're in big trouble. You, are, you really are in big trouble. Because uh, the sand really doesn't help. Even if you get back on, you've got no grip on, on those tyres that went off the track for a good couple of corners. So you're going to lose a lot of time. So coming up towards the final turn, it is a good overtaking opportunity this final corner, uh, but wasn't quite close enough on this occasion. And uh, another dynamic of this video, as someone else goes wide, rushing, he's going to lose loads of speed. And uh, are we going to be able to get past? Yes, we are, up towards turn one. Are we going to be able to go for the move? Not quite. But we do set the fastest lap there in the tow, 11.6. One of the dynamics here is... The Toyota FT1 versus again uh, versus the Audi R8, which I am using here, with a Taylor Swift livery, which obviously makes it much quicker. Now I'm going to try to fake this guy out. Go up the inside. There we go. Boom. Full send. And you might be able to catch it on the radar. There was a tap there, and I get sent up the mountain of Willow Springs. 
and unfortunately it's my time to say hello to our little friend, the sand. Okay, so it looked like a really good meteoric rise up the up the order there. Tenth to third, albeit only momentarily, and then we drop to fifth. But actually, no, we're going to drop to sixth because I was kind of a bit complacent here, a bit annoyed about that finish to the race, and we dropped down to sixth. There it is. Taylor Swift livery. It did help, but it didn't completely help. I could have had a podium there. Get it, Lewis. Okay, so some more weird occurrences. Are we near Area 51? Is that a stupid thing to say? I can't be totally sure. I don't think we are really, are we? I can't make that comparison. I can't make that link, really. So we're going to skip forward here. This race really didn't want to record properly for some reason. But it was very interesting. Now the top two, or sorry, the two in front of me. Um, this guy got a penalty for, honestly, he did nothing. He got overtaken and got a two second penalty for being overtaken. That's pretty much all I can say. But um, his loss is my gain. He disappears. Maybe there is some alien activity here. Some uh, paranormal activity going on here at Willow Springs. Okay, so through the final corner, up behind this Portuguese guy. And he's going to go fully defensive. Put the toe in the Audi R8 once again. He's in the FT1. And we bail out the move around the outside. You don't want to get that wrong. And get pulled onto the grass. You definitely do not want that. Happen. Next time around, well, he kind of went in way too narrow, spun out, the recording kind of went weird here, but basically I went into the side of him, hoping, I was hoping that he would ghost down, but unfortunately he didn't, and I clattered into the side of him, and got myself a nice tidy six second penalty for my dues there. Okay, so I go down into sixth place once again, another strong theme of the video, the fact that I'm always in that position. Now we're gonna fight with uh, the Norwegian here as we've gone through towards the uphill it looks like we're all kind of following each other there going wide and he goes deep into the corner I'm going to cut back on him and get the momentum on the way back up not that this matters really because I've got a six second penalty to serve and I'm going to lose all of these positions and I'm going to whip it forward here serve this six seconds and this is one of the most painful things in the universe actually serving a six second penalty they did a, they did some experiments on it, and actually, it turns out it's actually one of the worst things that you can do um, to a human is make them serve a six-second penalty. Absolute torture that is. And um, it looked like the race was kind of over there. I was in, I was in tenth. I was a long way off this group. But as you always know, if there's a big group up ahead, they're going to start fighting each other, and that always gives you some vague chance of recovering something. And I was having one eye on this big gaggle of cars up ahead hoping that they would all muller each other into the barrier but it didn't happen as you can see they kind of somehow got around the circuit so close to each other without murdering each other but then you come up to the final corner and things change because look at this I'm in 10th place and coming in here Moses in timely fashion makes a very strong appearance and all of my enemies have been parted to the sand sea, the side of the sand, the side of the track onto the sand. I'm not getting that one there, but we move up four positions in the space of about three seconds and go back up into sixth place. Big shout out to the boys back at the Taylor Swift factory. But here we go. I'm going to jump into the FT1 and see if I can improve my lap time, which I did. 11.8. Uh, uh, which uh, was a 112 dead for my last race, so I've improved. But let's go and have a look at my qualifying lap here. So it's going to be a slight improvement on that 8. As we come into turn 1, breaking about 75 metres before the corner. I was a little bit off the inside curve. But this is a track, again, that we've practised so many times from the Lewis Hamilton DLC, which really does help a lot. Doing a track over and over and over and over and over again, there's no substitute for spending a lot of time on the same track. Um, it is a different car, but still, you kind of learn the, the kind of the right route through the, through, the, through the lap to get a good lap time. Uh, this one here, you really have to pivot the car. This car is actually a little bit understeery. It steers really well mid-corner, but on the entry to the corner, it's kind of a little bit clunky, but it does get the job done. Um, so at this point, over the crest, onto the back straight, we're a, a slight bit up on our purple time which is 11.845 so we need to improve by 
um, just a little bit here, then we're going to improve our record. Breaking about 150 before the corner, staying wide and then cutting back for this very late apex. Really difficult corner to judge and it's still one that I can never get quite right. But I am going to improve the lap time here and it's going to be a slightly better lap time, 8.07, so four thousandths of a second quicker than my previous. Okay, so we've, we've had that nice lap time. We're going to bring that forward now into the race. I've been slowly moving forward up the order with our improved lap times. You see how close it is. It's a short lap, so the qualifying times are going to be really close. So any tenth that you can get, even half a tenth, might move you up a couple of positions on the grid. So definitely worth. it's definitely worth spending a lot of time on your qualifying. And okay, here we go. Can we go for the win? Can we get a podium? Which has been so elusive thus far in this session. Five laps, Willow Springs. Toyota FT1 starting from fourth. Okay, let's try and avoid the death again. It's proven to be a very solid theme of this one. Death. People drifting wide, people crashing. And it's just a signature of this circuit. It's just the way it is. It's just so difficult, unforgiving. You make a mistake, you get punished big time. And you know what? I'm a fan of that. I, I'm not a massive fan of the circuits where there's tons of runoff and you make a mistake you just drive wide onto the tarmac and you lose basically no time and a lot of the time when there's someone right behind you you can just keep your position by keeping keeping your foot in on the tarmac and no one gets punished for their mistakes this is an old school circuit for sure and I'd, I'd say it's a bit like Brands Hatch in a way in the sense that you go wide and it's kind of unforgiving because Brands Hatch also doesn't have uh, any tarmac runoff it's all grass or gravel uh, so it is a good challenge driving on these tracks you do have to have your wits about you minimise your mistakes which isn't happening here another person off at the exit of turn uh, number 9 on the track final corner a late defence there from the Ukrainian in the lead and it causes a bit of a concertina effect there with the Italian here in second as they're going to try to fight once again it's an Audi versus Toyota battle as we come through the long right-hander called Rabbit's Ear, incidentally. Lots of really long corners of this, of this circuit, which is why this car and the Audi R8 do so well. Both handling cars. Yes, there are some straights here, of course, but it really is about the cornering speed and the ability to do these long corners quickly. Uh, so, coming down here, turn two, sorry, lap two, and it's bottle number two for the Italian. Just drives a little bit onto the gravel, onto the sand, sorry, and he's wide. And now this gives me the perfect opportunity to go for the victory. Is it possible? We have a seven tenths of a second deficit here to the leader, and it's a direct duel in the same car, both in Toyota FT1 here. Uh, we have equal machinery, but I do have the advantage of being just behind in the slipstream, which is gonna help me, no doubt, in the wars to come. Coming up towards turn one then, we're going to scale forward, or scale back our braking point, given that we have the slipstream, so you can't quite use your normal braking point that, you, that, were, that I was using in qualifying. In the slipstream we're going to go a little bit quicker, so you need to brake a little bit earlier of course. Uh, the main objective here is just to try and tow him in on this, on this lap, bring that gap down to a couple of tenths rather than six or seven, and then potentially we can go for this move a little bit wide on the uphill left. The long right hand, and then look at that late apex power out. Use the camera of the corner, really helps you around there. And then into this very technical section here to be on the power as early as possible because you're on the power now for a good 15 seconds or so. In fact, we could probably count it, but it's a long time, so it really does matter exactly how early you get on the power. We are a lot closer this time around, uh, four tenths, and down this back straight, we're going to gain a lot of time. This is where we're going to gain most of the time in the slipstream. We're kind of be patient around the rest of the track. And look at that, closing up on the brakes. As we come through the final corner, both clipping that apex nicely, just grazing the curb, grazing the sand, almost spinning out, but keeping the car under control. And we're going to gain another tenth or two down the main straight, setting the fastest lap of the race so far, 11.7. He's going to be quaking in his boots as he looks in the rearview mirror. Sees F4H Super GT, fastest man on the circuit, bearing down on him. But he's keeping his cool so far. Through the long right. He's got his act together, and he's not making any mistakes, unlike all of the other guys on this race and the races before. 
uh, through the long left. Again, closing right up behind him. But this uh, uh, section here, not very good for overtaking unless they really do make a complete hash of it, which he hasn't done. A little bit wide, but we keep it just about on the circuit without drifting too far off. And now we can potentially go for this move in the slipstream. We're coming out of this turn by three tenths behind. Is it going to be enough? Probably will be actually to go for a move into the final corner as it does open up. We're going to go to the left hand side so we can swing to the right as the gap opens up. It doesn't quite open up, it goes defensive, and that is not a risk worth taking going up the inside there. So narrow, probably going to end in contact and a penalty. But we can go for the move here potentially again. Look how close we are. Crossing the main uh, uh, start finish line to begin the final lap. We're going to go to the inside and keep it pinned on the apex. And sort of under the pressure, I guess. He just drifts wide. There was no contact. But uh, I kind of forced his hand there a little bit. I didn't want to move to the outside and make it easy for him. I just wanted to do something a bit unpredictable. And just go to the inside and just make him think twice and not know exactly where I was. Well, we move up into the lead at the, at the start of the final lap of five. And uh, the gap behind actually goes up from a second to 1.5. So I think going wide there onto the onto the uh, sand cost him a little bit of further time as he comes back on and his tyres have no grip and he's going to lose further time so I have a one, one and a half second gap here just to bring it home do nothing stupid as I usually do and you know it could just happen now I come through this final corner and bin myself into the shadow realm but I have a bit of a margin we're going to play it nice and safe here make it a little bit early coast it through do nothing stupid and bring home the victory so after three races, we finally got our win. Actually, the Ukrainian goes very wide there. So it looks like a signature move of the circuit, drifting wide on the exit of the final corner. Finally, on the third attempt, we come through to have a victory. And uh, my main summary of this circuit really is keep it on the black stuff. And you'll probably do well when most people don't keep it on the black stuff. But there we go. Um, a really good little session there. Um, we, we improved our qualifying time each time, started a bit further forward on each race and then always moved forward overall. In fact, no, the second race I, start, I finished where I started, but you get the point. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always. Let me know your thoughts. Personally, I really enjoyed it, even though I normally hate this track, but there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.